Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 17th, 2014. So as usual, there's a ton of security news this week, and in order to shorten these vlogs, I'm going to start limiting myself to just three security stories. That's right, no matter how much cool news is out there that I want to talk about, I'm just going to cover three stories each week. And this week, the three stories have to do with a new watering hole attack that leverages zero-day flaws, uh, the latest attack on consumer routers, and some vulnerabilities in the Internet of Things. This week I'm going to lead with the biggest security story since it happened earliest in the week and it's probably the one you should most be aware of. Two different security companies, FireEye and also one of WatchGuard's partners, WebSense, found a new zero-day watering hole campaign. Uh, one of the security companies, FireEye, is calling the campaign Operation Snowman. And they first noticed it in a particular US veterans website. Essentially, they saw that this website was serving malware. And it was serving this malware using different zero-day vulnerabilities. One vulnerability affecting Adobe Flash, and another uh, vulnerability affecting IE, specifically IE10 and maybe also IE9. Now, WebSense also saw this particular attack, but they saw it on a different website, a French aerospace website. And although they were leveraging the same zero-day type of attack, it was actually used to install different malware. So these security companies and, and other pundits seem to think that there's different attack gangs actually leveraging this vulnerability. In the case of the US veteran site, uh, the, the bad guys seem to be using this watering hole or the veteran site to target different people associated with US military or government. And they're downloading something that appears to be similar to Ghost Rat, which is a piece of malware that uh, seems to come from some Chinese attackers. In any case, this is a a pretty big watering hole attack. It's definitely going after very specific victim bases, and it's not very often that you see drive-by downloads leveraging zero-day flaws. The industry has reacted to this news all week long. In fact, later in the week, as you'll probably read on the blog before this video comes out, both Microsoft and Adobe released emergency updates to both Flash and Internet Explorer to fix these vulnerabilities. So if you're watching this and you haven't gotten those emergency flash and IE patches, you should go get them immediately. Also do note, if you're using Internet Explorer 11, the latest version, you will not be vulnerable to these particular flaws. Another big story this week is news of a new worm that's affecting a lot of consumer Linksys routers and wireless access points. It was first discovered by ISC Stans, who blogged about it on their, their ISC diary. And apparently this worm scans the internet looking for any Linksys routers that offer remote access management pages, and it exploits vulnerabilities in some of the CGI scripts on these routers to gain remote, unauthenticated access to your Linksys router and ultimately full control of the router. Right now, the worm just seems to be worrying about self-replication, meaning once it can infect your router, it's going to start scanning the internet for other Linksys routers out there and try to infect them with the same worm as well. Later in the week, a researcher who had independently found the flaw on his own, he actually released exploit code for it since the cat was already out of the bag. But in any case, if you use certain older model, I believe E1000, E1300, and a bunch of other other models, Linksys routers or wireless and access points, it may be vulnerable to this particular flaw. And there is a worm actively exploiting it, and there is exploit code publicly available for it out on the internet. Now the good news is Belkin, the owners of Linksys, have released new firmware updates for this, so you should definitely go and update your firmware if you use this particular router. And as an aside, it's showing how a lot of this 
home security gear or home router gear is not the most secure gateway perimeter devices out there. If you're interested in home office security, next week at RSA, WatchGuard is going to be announcing some new products that might help you there. So keep an eye on WatchGuard at RSA next week. So it seems to be a bad week in general for Belkin, the owners of Linksys, because the third and final story I want to share this week has to do with a Belkin Internet of Things device, specifically Belkin's Wemo home automation system. This is a new class of product you've probably seen that allows you to automate your home network. You can hook it up to light switches and, and power outlets and web cameras and all kinds of devices so that maybe you can use your mobile phone or tablet to control things like when your lights turn on, uh, when you start a slow cooker so that dinner will be ready when you get home, and all kinds of other things like that. In any case, researchers at IOActive found five different vulnerabilities affecting these Wemo home automation devices. They were all different levels of vulnerabilities, and I won't go into a bunch of technical detail, though I'll post a link to the advisory if you're interested. But in general, they allow you to gain remote uh, control of these devices, be able to upload malicious firmware, maybe Trojan firmware to these devices. And there were flaws like the devices don't check SSL certificates, so it's very easy for you to fake a Belkin uh, cloud service so that these devices will think you're a trusted authority for sharing firmware and other vulnerabilities like that. Of course, the media talked a lot about this and talked about how maybe you can burn down a house by controlling these devices. While I think that level of, of malicious activity is unproven, you could certainly drive up someone's uh, energy bill, or at the very least, gaining access to someone's internal network through these devices so that you could do lateral movement to more valuable computers on the same network. In any case, it just goes to show you that people are going to be exploiting the Internet of Things. One of my predictions this year was to expect to see more vulnerabilities and attacks on the Internet of Things this year, and I think this particular vulnerability applied. Now, IOActive Insert actually released information about these vulnerabilities before Belkin had officially replied to this, and they had said that Belkin had not been responsive to their disclosure. However, since that happened, Belkin has responded. They do say the latest firmware fixes this. So if you happen to be a Wemo home automation system user, you can download the latest version of the mobile app and it will contain the firmware update that will fix this vulnerability. In general, one tip is we need to remember to patch firmware. The Internet of Things consists of lots of lots of devices that run software, but because this is embedded in hardware, we call it firmware. And in general, consumers especially do not seem to update things like home routers, access points, NAS storage devices or home automation systems as often as they might update Windows. So as a user of the Internet of Things, be sure you update your firmware as regularly as you update your software. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it informative, and I hope that by restricting myself to three things that I've shortened this episode. That said, there's a ton of other security news out there, so if you're interested in any of those other stories, be sure to check the blog post associated with this video, and be sure to just regularly visit the WatchGuard Security Center for other security stories. As a quick show note, next week is a very busy week. It's the RSA Security Conference in San Francisco. I hope to post a security blog next week as well, though it may arrive a little later than usual, and I may have to skip it for a text version depending on how busy I am at the conference. But in any case, check the blog for more details. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.